It's, I don't know, it's very interesting. I'm not saying it's wrong, it's just different. What's up, dreamers? Welcome back to The Rocker Review, where every Monday we take a different artist, different genre, different song, and we dissect it to figure out what sort of songwriting lessons we can learn. I'm Bryce of Midnight Notion. Today is a brand new genre to this channel, funk or jazz, and we're going to start off with Pastime Paradise by Stevie Wonder. Now, if you watched the Gangsta's Paradise v uh, video from a few weeks back, uh, you know that I learned that the, the song came from Stevie Wonder, Pastime Paradise. Here it is. So we're going to check out this song and see what Stevie did with it so then we can compare it. I mean, I'm not going to compare it to Coolio. I've already done the Coolio video. Go watch that on your own time. But I want to see what Stevie did with it. Now, I don't have a whole lot of experience with uh, funk or jazz. I have played a handful of Stevie's songs. <laughs> I would assume that it's very similar to pop in that it's going to be verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. That's a pretty standard structure across a lot of genres, so that's the structure I'm expecting. But usually funk is going to be a lot more musicianship heavy. We're going to get a lot more experimentation on a lot of different instruments, so maybe that's what we'll get in the song. Or it'll be similar to the Coolio song and it'll be kind of just one loop that repeats all the way through. Really, I have no idea. Let's just get into it. Rock that subscribe button for this channel and make sure you subscribe to my music on all of your music listening platforms. Midnight Notions, the name, rock is the game. Let's listen to some music, shall we? Okay. Already much different entrance. It's, it's already, I already love it better. <laughs> I mean, obviously when a hip hop artist takes a loop and they apply it to a song, it's going to be just like a four bar loop or an eight bar or 16 or 30. It's going to be an even number loop and it's going to repeat a lot of times. And really the changes in that is going to be dropping out the bass guitar or dropping out the strings and keeping the drums still there or dropping out everything and just having it being voice. But already from the beginning, we have a slow fade of most of the strings, but we've got some, uh, is it hi-hats? We got percussion, right? We got the little scrapey thing. We've got a like a like a cowbell of some sort, and then we've got a um, was it bass right at the beginning? Doop boo boo. Lot of percussion. Love it. Those strings sound like they've either, either been affected or that they're synth strings. I would not be surprised. When did this song come out? Released 1976. Synthesizers were still relatively new in this era. There was a lot of synth heavy music coming out. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was a synth string. It doesn't sound like a natural string to me right here. So um, very interesting. Ooh, hot. Well. Right with the chorus from the beginning. Same. Wasting. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna stop it here. We have what I'm assuming is the chorus, but I'm only assuming that because I've heard the Coolio song. If you've never heard this before, you might assume that this is verse one, and then maybe tell me who of them will come to be, how many of them are you and me. Maybe that's the chorus. You don't really know. That's where the first change is. If I was hearing this for the first time, I didn't know Coolio's song, that's what I would assume verse one and then chorus. But because I know Coolio's song, I know that spending most of their lives is the hook of Coolio's song. Um, he's talking about the gangster's paradise. And now in his, he just uses that same line. They've been spending most of their lives. 
um, living in a gangster's paradise. He basically says that four times, but he changes some of the words. So been spending or they're spending or, you know, I don't remember the words, uh, but but it changes just a couple of words. Here we have a full on different take. We have the, the same line repeated twice and then they've been wasting most of their time glorifying days long gone behind. They've been wasting most of their days in remembrance of ignorance oldest praise. This is a lot of words for the end of a chorus. Uh, typically you find the end of a chorus to be like a hook, a stop, everybody sings the line, but this is actually really clunky for the end of a chorus. It's very interesting. In remembrance of ignorance, oldest praise, blah, 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 blah. It's, I don't know, it's very interesting. I'm not saying it's wrong, it's just different. Then we have tell me who of them will come to be? How many of them are you and me? We remember this from the Coolio thing as the bridge or the outro. Um, it's a different section in that song and it's a very interesting section. This has a very similar vibe. We're questioning who of these people who are wasting their lives, is that everyone else or is it you and me? It could be both, it could be both, uh, but very interesting so far, let's keep going. Felt a little major there. Segregation. Ooh, okay. Dispensation, isolation, exploitation, mutilation, mutation, miscreation, information to the evils of the world. I have to say that this this verse, I'm gonna call it a verse, feels <laughs> I don't know, it feels kind of um, Elton John a little bit. It's reminding me of something by Elton John. I can't put my finger on it. Um, it. This might be because earlier today I was thinking about the movie The Road to El Dorado. So maybe that's just where my brain is right now. But the vibe of this sort of verse is very, um, is reminding me of that. But the words are speaking really important thing, race relations, segregation, right? We know that in the 70s, we, that was only 10 years after uh, the civil rights movement here in the U.S. So things were still a little, pr a lot heavy. Actually, things are still really heavy. We're not going to get into the racial stuff. We're listening to the music, but he's obviously touching on some really important themes. And instead of really um, diving deep into them and describing what is, what am I feeling about dissipation? What am I feeling about segregation? He's just listing them. He's just using words. These are all un words, shun words rather. Um, and so they all rhyme. They're all rhyming words. It's just a single word, a couple of syllables, consolation, four syllables, segregation, four. Pick a word or a sound, pull out your trusty rhyming dictionary and go to town. There you go. You've got yourself a verse. That's all you need to do. It really is that simple. And even, even though he's not diving into it, it's still like sort of hammering it into our minds. We're really thinking like, oh yeah, these are really themes that we should be considering in the world. So very well done, Stevie. Getting the point across without like making us question it without telling us what to question. That really open-ended writing style. It's cool to me. So we got a chorus again. The future paradise. Past time, future. So he's changed the, 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 the word. I like this a lot. I celebrated Coolio in his song for the narrative arc, how in the beginning he was like, yeah, this is life on the street. And uh, and then by the end, he's going, maybe it shouldn't be life on the street for me. Like he's questioning himself by the end. This is a very similar thing where at the beginning we started with looking at the past. We're thinking about the pastime paradise. And now we've got people spending their times in a future paradise. Now we're thinking ahead. We're not in the moment anymore. We've overcorrected. We've gone too far. And um, it seems to me that the chorus is just part, like it's two parts. It's the main part with the spending most of their lives. 
and then a different the whole second half of the chorus is different and then i would say the tell me who of them will come to be i i'm not reconsidering that as a hook or the end of the chorus because it feels like it's in the same section um it's hard to separate this out because the you know the song kind of keeps looping very similar to coolio it's those string loops and then um and, and then the words change the difference is when we get to this the shun words the consolation segregation etc that is a different chord structure so let's take a look at that chord structure see if we can figure it out on this next verse I'm going to use the bass today. So when it comes to the chorus, we've got an A flat here, and then it comes down to this, uh, which would be an F, and then we've got a G, and then we come down to C. During the verse, we have this interesting move. It seems like we're going back and forth between that A flat and a B flat. It feels like we're climbing, we're ascending, we're going upwards, and every time we ascend, we drop back down, which could be, you know, sort of metaphorical for the, the civil rights movement. We take one step forward, and then another problem happens. We're going forward and backwards always. Maybe that's intentional, maybe not, but it seems like that's kind of where it's going. Initially, I thought it was starting with that A flat and then dropping down to this G, uh, but I don't, I don't think it is. I think G is just part of the chord when we get into that B flat. Could be like a sus chord or something like that. So it's either j going back and forth between those two or between those two. Either way, it feels like it's just kind of going back and forth between two chords. It starts slower initially. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And then as we get further into it, it bounces back uh, quicker. Boo, 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 boo. Kind of goes, it picks up the pace. So you you have this rise and fall. It, it could be a metaphor. And then it's, it's gradually building again. And it feels like it's going to climb. In any other song, it would probably keep climbing. Right? And we would have some sort of major resolution. But instead, we come back to this rather minor feeling chorus. So never really, it feels like it's teasing something positive with those major chords, but then it takes it ba back away and it feels minor again. So very interesting structure musically. I like it. Proclamation, Okay, so it may it may move a little bit more at the end. It might be more than just those two notes, but either way, it still feels like a back and forth, and then it gradually builds. It changes a little bit, and then we go back to the chorus. So cool. Yeah, get it, Stevie. They've been spending most of their lives Chorus is living in a future paradise. They've been spending most of their lives living in a future paradise. We've been spending too much of our lives living in a Are they speaking a different language? And a gong, and chirping, and the forest. Okay, Stevie Wonder with Pastime Paradise. Very cool. We got, uh, for 1976, um, some cool uh, themes here, really talking about uh, race relations here in America uh, during that those times. 
A very easy riff repeating throughout the whole song. Well, not the whole song. Actually, it changes quite a bit. We don't have those strings playing all the way through. Changes up in the verses, so there's enough to keep things interesting. No real drums. It's all percussion. All percussion and the strings. And then uh, right at the end, we got those voices in the background. It sounded like they might have been saying something in another language. I couldn't hear them that well. I'd love to hear just the isolated singers. But they were saying something that wasn't matching what Stevie was saying. So it was sort of a call and response thing. Not really call and response, actually. It was just they were saying something different at the same time. More of a counterpoint kind of a deal there. But either way, it's an interesting song. I can't put it up against Coolio because I like them both for different reasons. I think they both say different things. I think that Stevie's song is a little bit more general about race relations, and uh, Coolio's song is a little bit more about his specific life uh, living in the West Coast and growing up kind of just getting used to life out there. <laughs> so um, they're different things. They're diff there are different reasons for each song. And obviously they're like, what, 20, 30 years apart. So they're going to be different. But either way, I like them both. And, and that's it. That's it. I like them both. This is a really nice song. I understand now why Coolio uh, sampled this song uh, because it is really catchy. The strings are really cool. Um, I really like the percussion, though. I think I like that better than, I don't know. I love the drums. I love the drums, but I like hearing the percussion. I would have liked to hear this percussion and the drums come in later. That would have been cool. But this is what we got, and it's pretty awesome. I hope you like it too. Uh, so now it's your turn in the comments below. What do you think of this song? What sort of lessons did you learn from it? Uh, let me know. Make sure you rock the subscribe button. More content coming your way every Monday. And make sure you check out my music. Midnight Notion is available all across the internet. I would love the streams. Thank you in advance for all of that. And of course, you are super awesome. Thank you so much for being here. You're one of over 3,000 now. Thank you all to the three 3,000 subscribers who are here. I appreciate you. I love you very much. I hope you have a wonderful day. And of course, you rock.